Welcome everyone to the Deeper Insights uh, Tech Canada webinar series. My name is Ruth Ann and it is always my pleasure to host these sessions. And also welcome to the first week of September and wherever you are in Canada, fall is on the horizon if it hasn't already arrived for all of us. For the webinar today, I would encourage you to use the question box as much as possible to put in your comments and your questions for the speakers so that we have time at the end to engage those questions. Our presenter today is Isabel Mercier Turcotte, and she is a brand positioning strategist and a business growth catalyst. She is one of the most inspirational brand marketing and customer keynote uh, presenters that we have. And it, I've been looking forward to this opportunity to have Isabel uh, in front of our membership for quite some time. And as we were just saying before we came on live, it feels like we've known each other for a year, and yet this is our first opportunity. So. Some of you may have seen some of the work that Isabel has done in the past with large companies such as A&W, Roby's Footwear, Earl's Restaurants, IMAX, HSBC Investments, and those are just a few out there. So I know that I'm not going to take up too much time because I want to turn this over now to Isabel. So welcome, Isabel. It is a pleasure to host you today. Uh, thank you, Ruthann. And yes, you're right. It feels like we have known each other for, for a long time. Uh, and I am honored to be uh, presenting here today. I've been looking forward to this. Positioning is so important, especially with what's happening in the world today. And that's what we're going to be talking about, how to position your brand and your business to be the first, the best, or the only, so that you can grow and thrive in any economic situation, right? Despite of what's happening in the world. Positioning is as important at, to the health of a business as a heartbeat is to the human body, truly. And that is true whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're a small business owner with a, with a team, or whether you're the head of a Fortune 500 company. Without strong positioning, the only option, only option you have left is to compete on price. And that's a guaranteed race to the bottom, especially in this new um, economy that COVID is creating. Before TEDx, there was no overnight delivery, right? Bef uh, Jake Burton basically invented the sport of snowboarding. Before Domino's, there was no market for home delivered pizza. Before Apple, in fact, Apple, yeah, before Apple, a phone, uh, was literally to make phone calls as opposed to everything that we can do with the phone today. PayPal created the online payment category and uh, wow, one day painting paints your house within 24 hours. Right. All brands that have positioned themselves as the first. And um, since this pandemic, 60% of consumers have tried a new business, right? A new business, a new offering for the first time, 60%. And 89% of these consumers plan to actually stay with this new option. That is huge. Now, you know, I'm not gonna lie, this pandemic is terrible. Nobody, you know, we don't wish this on anybody for sure. But it's also, in my opinion, the single greatest opportunity you'll ever have to grow your business and that is though assuming that you do the work that's required to clearly position your brand and your business as the first the best or the only otherwise you will get lost in a sea of information and a, a sea of choice overload your brand absolutely has to make life better and your brand absolutely has to be positioned as the number one choice in the eyes of your consumers, right? In the eyes of your ideal clients, or you will eventually be eliminated. Now, I'm known as uh, the Simon Cal of branding. Um, and I will say that I choose to see that as a huge compliment because this guy sure knows how to spot, right? How to position and how to catapult uh, talent forward. I am, however, a lot more fashionable and friendlier. Uh, but in the past 25 years of being in business, I've created a seven-figure branding agency right out of my teens. 
a seven-figure strategy positioning and coaching agency. I've produced and hosted the number one uh, online branding show called Leap TV. I've worked with a lot of amazing small, local, and really inspiring clients, as well as big uh, mogul brands. Uh, I'm a two-time uh, TEDx speaker with over 2.5 million views, and I won Entrepreneur of the Year, and I've been voted one of the most influential um, in North America. Now, having said that though, believe me, I have been through my fair share of crippling economic downturns that required me to reinvent, right? Reinvent and re-elevate um, to continually position my brand always as the first, the best, or the only, because that passes. At some point when you're the first, you're not gonna be the first all the time. You have to rejig and reinvent in order to continually be the first uh, and the best. Branding and positioning absolutely can make or break your business, and that is a true fact. So on the agenda today, uh, Ruthann has graciously given me 12 hours to deliver my content. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I, what I will do, though, is I'll give you everything that I possibly can within the time allotted um, so that we can debunk some branding myths that are slowing down your growth. We're going to I'm going to share three vital positioning ingredients. There are 10 ingredients. I'll share three today to help you position yourself as the first, the best or the only. And we're going to look at a brand positioning success formula that will really help you dramatically increase the value and the leadership and the influence uh, that you bring to the table. I'm also gonna give you an opportunity to connect with me uh, for a few additional resources so that you can implement what you learn uh, and the, the, so that you can deepen the work uh, that we're gonna talk about today. The key is to turn common sense into common practice. You'll hear things that you've heard here before, but if you if you listen to it with different ears, um, and most importantly, if you turn that common sense into common practice, uh, magic, magic happens. All right, so I would be a fool to do business with anyone else but you, regardless of price. That is precisely what my team and I help our clients achieve, right, period. That's the, the whole goal of positioning is to hear that, for you to hear that from your ideal clients. But let me tell you, it takes a hell of a lot more than talent, a good idea, and a cool website to create that kind of positioning. It takes three differentiating pillars, constantly elevated and course corrected, course corrected uh, to create that kind of result. And these three pillars are positioning, personality, and performance. Those three important pillars, they're important to create a brand that's positioned and most importantly, engineered to thrive no matter what's happening in the world. Positioning is all around what, do you, what, do you, what does your brand stand for, right? What do you wanna be known for? What is the new normal that you're creating with your business, with your service, with your brand? How are you claiming a position or a reputation in, the, in a market or several different markets for your company, for your product, or for your service? In which way is your company's offering different from your competitors, right? How are you being the first, the best, or the only? In other words, why should someone choose you, your product, your service, your brand, instead of anyone else's, regardless of price. Then personality is all about what does your brand stand for? What does your culture stand for? What are you willing or not willing to do to deliver on your genius, your product, your service? How do you make life better? And why people fall, should fall in love and do fall in love with your brand. And performance is you know, all about what your clear aspirations are as a brand, as a business. What are your goals, your objectives? And most importantly, what needs to be eliminated, what needs to be automated, and what needs to be innovated 
to make your business and your brands, one, operate like a well-oiled machine and also be in demand. How will you systematize the predictable to maximize the exceptional? Because we believe that inside of structure lives freedom. Now, within these three trifecta pillars, there are eight key areas for growth. Brand positioning and culture, vision and strategy, time management, efficiency, efficiency and organization, mindset and inner game, because we all know that a lot of the part of the success is between, between the two ears, technology, sales and marketing, and money and KPIs. These uh, truly, these key areas for growth have to co consistently be elevated and helped and impacted in order to create a brand positioning and a culture that is worth talking about, right? That is worth talking about. And I'm going to start, I want to start with a, a little rant around what branding is and what branding isn't. Um, because truly there's misconceptions around branding and of course today we're going to talk about brand positioning that's what the whole essence of this presentation is so for the record branding is not a logo now is a logo important to a brand of course it is you know it's a visual trigger to remind you if if you like this brand if you're connecting with this brand for example my first experience at denny's i experienced a nine nine day food poisoning let me tell you, when I see the Denny's logo, I don't feel so hot, right? Just a proof that a, a visual trigger, a logo is a visual trigger to remind you if you like this brand or not. Branding is also not a website. It is a website important to a brand? Of course, a website is a, is a spokesperson that actually you know, converts uh, potential clients to clients while you sleep or while while you're busy delivering your genius but branding is not a website branding is not a product either the product is important without a product or a service you wouldn't have a brand but branding doesn't sit and it doesn't it's not the definition a product is not the definition of a brand so if it's not a logo if it's not a website and if it's not a product or a service what is it Branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? Branding is you know, how people feel when they buy your product. It's how people feel when they experience your product, your service, your brand. Brands are defined by people and emotions. They're not defined by companies and they're not defined by markets. It's all about people and emotions. In other words, it's not what you say it is, it's what they say it is. Perception is absolutely reality in branding, in most things in life for that matter, but branding specifically. The key though is to align what is from your organization with how it's being perceived or experienced. And when you have alignment there, you have something good. You have something sustainable and something that people want. Now let's look at positioning. Brand positioning is the place you want to own in your target audience's mind, right? It's, it's exploring, it's identifying, it's refining what makes your brand the best choice for your ideal clients. Positioning is confidently owning who you are as a brand, what makes you different and compelling. Most entrepreneurs are unclear about that. And some of you today might be in that same boat. Positioning is understanding the number one problem that you solve, that your product, yourself, your solution. What is the number one product um, problem that you solve? And then it's about the next three to five sub problems, right? Secondary problems that you help your customer solve. Positioning is also knowing and owning how you, right? Your business, your brand, make life better. Being clear about who you are best suited to help is also super, uh, a, an important part of positioning. What, uh, you know, who wants and who truly values what you offer, 
you know, it's not about convincing people to buy what you have to offer. It's about approaching through positioning and getting these people to go, where the hell have you been on my life, right? And most entrepreneurs are literally what I call schizophrenic about, about that. There's just too many things that they offer and you can be and you can offer many different highways, but you cannot promote more than one highway at the time with a specific language uh, in alignment with your brand. So truly, brand positioning is all about creating no like, and trust. And we've all heard this before. Yes, no like, and trust, Isabel. But I want to push this forward further. You know, it's positioning is DT equals R plus D. And I will, of course, share with you what that means. It's desire and trust is created from reliability and delight. Positioning and tr creating trust is all about building desire by meeting and exceeding your customer's expectations. Of course, once you're also resolving a problem that is worth and that needs to be resolved. I mean, that's a, that's a, big, a big point here. Now, for delight, delight is an under, uh, underestimated, underutilized resource here. I remember being at Costco and I had shopped a little bit differently here and <laughs> I didn't shop very intelligently. And by the time I got to the, uh, the till, my ice cream had started melting. And uh, the person passing through at the till, you know, she actually says, hey, she says to the microphone, hey, we need a fresh new bucket of ice cream on aisle or whatever, right? Till number or whatever. And I thought, wow, one, I did not expect that from Costco because it's about, you know, hey, the next customer passing through, the next paying, the next customer. But Costco's positioning is being extremely helpful while providing quality goods and services at the lowest price possible. So these little moments of delight, what they do is they create delight, they create trust, they create something to talk about, and they create a desire to come and shop there again and again, because we feel heard, we feel understood, and we feel like they've got our backs. That makes massive difference. So I wanna share with you the first brand positioning ingredient that is absolutely vital, and it is your mission. And I don't want you to think that this is a mission statement because it's not. The, uh, it's an energetic mission, an internal mission. And it's how you want your brand to leave people feeling. Nothing more, nothing less. The problem is people create mission statements. And mission statements have their place, they're important, but mission statement is a bit of a swear word here at Leap Zone. Because most of the time, mission statements are long, boring, nobody really connects with them. And when you ask what the, anybody in an organization, what's the mission of the organization, they go, you know, I don't know, it's written on the website somewhere, but they, they're not, not only do they not know it, but they're not in complete alignment and being an advocate for it. When you know how you wanna leave people feeling, and when you align everyone in your organization, and in your business and everything you do in your business is aligned with delivering on that, magic happens, magic happens. See, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. They buy a feeling, right? They buy a sense of belonging. There's a, an insurance company in the UK that, you know insurance companies, right, often, uh, you know, when, when a disaster happens and you've got your insurance, uh, it's often there's a lot of loopholes and you, you're, we're, we're taught as a society to be cautious of insurance companies because there's always loopholes. Now, not all insurance companies operate that way. That one in the UK had a mission of leaving their customers feeling wowed and delighted. And as a result, when disaster struck, strikes, they actually send their customers onto an ideal vacation or a great experience while they are fixing uh, whatever the, uh, whatever the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for, the disaster that they were experiencing. Now, you don't create services or ex um, experiences like this by having a long, boring mission statement that is all about, you know, 
profit and stakeholders. You know, it's about how you want to leave people feeling. At Leave Zone, we want to leave people feeling on fire and unstoppable. And we do that in everything that we do. Ritz, Ritz Carlton's energetic mission is to leave people feeling like family and men, their entire system and experiences based on that. Everything, if you've gone there once, they know what you like, what you don't like, um, what, what you want to be aware of, what you don't want to be aware of. They literally treat you like a family member. FedEx's energetic mission is to leave people feeling cared for. And they have a whole campaign where their staff has random acts of kindness. They help people out of nowhere. And literally a lot of that, it, it, it gets viral online. It gets at the very minimum shared. And they are known as a kind company. So the key with the mission is to get everyone on your team and everything you do in your organization to align with one or two words, simple, so everybody is on track with that. The second brand positioning ingredient is your promise. Your promise is your measurable accountability as a brand. It's what bridges your genius and the needs and desires, not just needs, but desires of your ideal clients. It's basically what you deliver without fail, come rain or shine. And the problem is most companies truly, they don't have a brand promise or they have a very poor brand promise. And when you don't have a strong brand promise, you're leaving a hell of a lot of money on the table because you're not communicating what's in it for your customers in a way that, get that, get that gets them to say, where the hell have you been all my life? I've been looking for you or for this solution for a long time. There's a company in Vancouver called Provident Security, and there is a, they're a security company. And um, Mike Jagger is the owner of this uh, company, and he started that company right out of his, uh, right out of his teens. And you know that um, when you have a keypad and you have an, uh, a security company for working with you, um, you know, if an alarm goes off, it literally is two and a half hours of response time from police and between one to one and a half hour response time from the very company that you're paying for protection. And Mike thought that that was ridiculous. He was like, that's, that's ridiculous. We're expecting this and we're getting this, right? So he created a company and a brand promise that is help within five minutes, right? A response time of five minutes. And as a result of that, he's had to invent technology called the link technology. There's a video on their website um, that actually explains how, what technology they've had to implement in their cars and in their headquarters to actually make that happen. It wasn't easy to make that happen, but as a result of a strong needed and desired brand promise, they are now the fastest growing security company in North America. Their ads um, you might have seen them and now you will. And they say, are you paying enough for your security company? Because they're positioned, they position themselves as the first and the only in that category. See, when you're clear about what your promise is, right? And it's a promise that is that solves top of mind problems for your clients, obviously. Uh, and it's a promise that people want you can actually charge a premium for what you do. Money loves clarity. Money loves focus. Apple promises to always change the status quo and they've created a cult-like culture that believes that once you go Mac, you never go back. That's, you've heard this before, for sure. You know, they, and, and the early adopters that love Mac, they love the Apple brand because it fuels their needs for uniqueness. And they know that they belong to this cool cult-like culture, right? That is strong positioning. If Apple created a furniture line, there would be lineups everywhere around the world without people having seen the furniture line yet. There would be lineups to buy it. Uber, Airbnb, Amazon, Band-Aids, those are some of the major brands that have created their own categories to be the first and to always remain the first. Um, 
there's a client of ours that uh, we've worked with for a while. Um, they're a small, a small security company actually in Vancouver. And uh, before we worked together, um, this gentleman here generated just a little, uh, just a little over 250k a year. Small, small business. But by creating a killer brand promise together, and by really positioning one of his product as the first and the only, he was able to secure his first uh, 600 and 600 thousand dollar contract, uh, which was a massive win for him. And that happened through the COVID, uh, through the COVID, I was going to say shit show and I didn't want to swear, but there it is <laughs> through this kid, right? And that, that could not have happened without a clear promise and an offer that cannot be refused. So an internal mission and uh, a clear promise. Now the next is your uh, X factor. The X factor is truly what separates you from the pack, right? It's why people choose you instead of anyone else. The key here is regardless of price. There's an ad, there's a little video online about Apple and it's a store selling uh, phones, but they don't sell Apple phones. And it's a little girl, a little cartoon that goes, do you sell Apple phones? No, we don't sell Apple phones, but we sell way better phones. The phones do this, do that. Nope, I want, a, I want an Apple. I want an Apple phone. And I mean, the video goes on and on and on. They even say the, the, the phone, the, the other phone, right? The Android phones, they serve coffee. They do this, they do that. They, and still <laughs> the little girl, like, nope, I don't care. I want an Apple phone. So truly that is why I say regardless of price, because who knew that phones were going to be $2,000, right? Years ago, we would have went like, hell no, but yes. And there are millions and millions of people who buy it. So the X factor is what makes you the number one choice in the eyes of your ideal clients. Once again, the problem is very few people, very few brands know what makes them truly stand out or worse, how to communicate that uniqueness in a way that resonates and influences. And when you don't know what makes you stand out and when, or when you don't know how to communicate it in a way that resonates, your confidence in your own service and products go down, right? Your ability to get clients or make sales go down. Um, you're, you start doubting the value of your products or services. And worst of all, you lose potent opportunities for growth and you leave a hell of a lot of money on the table. Innovations don't come from great ideas. They come from fixing problems, right? They come from dismantling the status quo. And I have a great example for you on that, which is Tesco Home Plus. Tesco is a grocer um, with a vision to grow their brand to a whole new level of influence and impact. They want to be the number one on the planet. But Tesco knew that it had a massive problem with their Korean markets. The Koreans work hard. Koreans work long hours. They're not the only culture to do so, but right now we're talking about Koreans. So they work long hours. They spend a lot of time in transit. And most importantly, they hate grocery shopping. So Tesco obviously knew that in order to grow, they would have to solve a time and a desire issue which is, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I don't think that that's a small task, you know? So they started asking questions like, what if, right? What if grocery shopping was fun? What if it was relaxing? What if it was cool? What if it was cool, right? What if ghost grocery shopping was practical? How about that, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? What if grocery shopping was at your fingertips? Well, what you're seeing here on that slide is actually not a real, grocery store aisle. What you see is a subway station that mimics a grocery store to allow people to actually shop uh, on the wall, literally by clicking their phones while they're waiting for their train. We talk about convenience, right? Talk about positioning themselves as the first and the only. No more big stores, reducing their expenses by hundreds of millions of dollars while massively increasing their sales. Uh, the result, their profit rose by 
and they created of course a much happier culture right they literally created convenience and um delight and that's truly what i call you know flipping an industry on its head now you don't need to flip an industry on its head in order to have a strong x factor demand plus scarcity equals opportunity Cri from the same token in a pandemic crisis plus danger also equals opportunity. There's a, a courier company client of ours, Novex. Um, we love these guys. They're absolutely amazing. And they're the best, the best delivery solution in the Vancouver Lower Mainland. You know, they're also the only delivery company that is carbon neutral and B Corp certified. They have more hybrids than any other same day courier company which means that uh, their emissions are 180 tons lower every year. Now, how did they communicate that before we came along? By saying, changing the way we deliver. What does that mean, right? What does that mean to their ideal clients? Nothing, zip, nada. We've positioned, we've repositioned them as the safest, greenest, kindness, same day courier company. That positions them as the first and the best and also the only. And that's playing to win versus playing not to lose. See, talking about them and changing the way we deliver, that's kind of like fast going about positioning yourself. No, claim your spot. You are the first, the best and the only. Let's actually scream that everywhere so that you can actually create the influence and the resonance that is needed. They've also, as a result of this re repositioning, see when you reposition and your positioning is clear, you can therefore create products and services that actually align with that. So recently we've created with them a retail delivery boost program. So retail stores who have been truly affected by the pandemic because they don't sell online, they now have an opportunity to sell online and an opportunity to sell via phone by partnering with them as a delivery company. And, and Novex takes care of all their store signage in order to promote that they can deliver. So again, that doesn't, those initiatives don't get created with a mission statement that is blah, 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 blah. They get created by understanding what we stand for and aligning everything that we do and our team members to be in alignment with delivering nothing but that and that's inspiring see the goal is not to do business with everyone who needs what you have the goal is to do business with people who believe in what you believe your team members your clients your joint venture partners your suppliers right and some of you truly i know because we've been doing this for uh, almost 30 years some of you are not working with people who believe in what you believe and that's extremely frustrating, it's time consuming, and most importantly and shittily, it's very costly, very costly, because there's a lot of money that's being left on the table. Now, I uh, on the agenda, I showed that I was gonna share a brand positioning success formula. And now, if you want your brand to become more influential, which of course you're here, of course you want that, right? More influential, create more impact, and be loved by more people, this simple formula truly will make the difference between I like you versus I must work with you, or I like your brand versus I must have your brand. And this formula is P plus PDS equals rockstar brand. There you have it. We're done, <laughs> just kidding. All right, so P is an authentic and differentiating brand promise, right? And PDS is the uh, brand delivery, right? Your promise, your brand promise delivery system. What is a brand promise delivery system? It's every contact that you that is made before with your clients and prospects, right? Before, during, and after a sale. Whether you sell services or products, ultimately you're in the business of making life better, period. And people need to know how you're making life better and why they should choose you instead of, every, of, of anybody else.
So now let's dig a little bit deeper in the LeapZone Promise Delivery System, which has eight key stages to, of course, create a customer experience that's worth talking about. So you got to give people something to talk about. That's also part of positioning. How you pre-qualify if you're in a service business, you know, how do you pre-qualify? How do you qualify your ideal clients? Um, how do you propose? How do you offer your products or services? How do you onboard uh, a new client? How do you complete uh, a process or a transaction? How do you always stay top of mind? How do you follow up? How do you stay top of mind in a way that's going to get people to come back again and again and again? And unfortunately, this is where people screw up the most. You know, most people don't have a solid when this, then that system. And not having a consistent promise delivery system, that leads to literally overwhelm, overwork, and being underpaid. And it becomes a, a price versus value battle. There's no scalability, right? The ceiling of growth is low. And there's no differentiation. There's no reason to buy you over Jane Doe, for example. How you answer the phone, how you follow up, how you consistently stay top of mind, how you have a system in place to brighten someone's day. We have a system in place where when a client or someone says, you know, they're not having a good day, something is in the mail for them immediately. Just creating moments of delight. That requires structure. It requires systems. It requires you know, intelligence behind your actions. Because structures, because all of those touch points, all the smallest touch points, they all matter because they do create wow and delight. And they ensure that you provide, uh, as I said earlier, right, a customer experience that's worth, worth talking about. Structures, systems, support are what gets results, not good ideas. I mean, good ideas are important, but they're also a dime a dozen, right? Structure, system, support. We operate as human beings, we operate better when we have a step-by-step -step process to follow. And when your team uh, in, your, in your business has a step-by-step -step process to follow. So talking about process and support, uh, just write hell yes in the chat. Um, if you like smart success shortcuts, just write hell yes in there and then we will see later. So what I wanna do now is I wanna share with you some great transformations uh, that we've created with some of our clients from a positioning elevations perspective. And you'll see that the difference that brand and brand positioning clarity makes on your visual identity. Because what I've shared with you today means absolutely nothing, of course, if it's not clearly supported by your team and if it's not well communicated by your cosmetic brand, right? Your logo, your website, the visual triggers that get people to go, I love this brand, I love this company. And a visual brand and a website can be either an expense or it can be an investment with a high return on investment by doing the positioning work that's required to turn your cosmetic brand and website into your most valuable spokesperson, right? Someone that accurately speaks on your behalf 24 seven. And uh, someone, someone truly that converts your prospects into happy clients while you sleep. So there's a couple of examples that I want to show here. So this is what I see a lot, right? People who have everything in the kitchen sink uh, on the first uh, half of their homepage. And then what it does for us is we just don't know. We don't know what you stand for. We don't know what you offer. It's, it's convoluted and it's literally trying to put everything in the kitchen sink in there. You know, really looking at what is it that you stand for? What is the one thing that you want your prospect or your customer, what's the one action you want them to take while um, browsing and while learning about you? And positioning your, your brand as the one thing that you want to be known for. Trisha is the yes you can um, brand. It's very clear in everything that she does. Um, uh, the, the company here, Big Bus, um, you know, it, they were purchased by um, West Coast Sightseeing, but ultimately it took probably, if I recall, 35 clicks to actually really get to something that they wanted to purchase. Whereas now it's all about simplicity, it's all about choosing your experience, and it's about personality of the brand. Let's explore together. 
So for people who actually want to craft and have help craft an experience that's worth going through in visiting Vancouver and its surrounding, their position as the company to actually um, do this with. And of course, you can't be positioned, you can't want to be the first, the best and the only and position yourself as such with this is what their vans look like in the past. If you want to be the first, you got to be seen. You got to align your visual with your vision and with your internal or energetic mission. And you got to actually talk about, see their ties, that's part of their core values. So part of their core values are on their ties, which means that a lot of people ask questions about that and they are answering and communicating what they, hard, they wholeheartedly believe in constantly because customers ask questions. They're curious about their brand. Imagine that this is used to be the competitor to Fitbit. This is what they looked like. They, nobody knew what they were about, yet they're actually a better solution than Fitbit. So again, up-leveling and communicating exactly uh, in a beautiful, intelligent, and simple way makes the world of difference. Creating a homepage is about um, triage. It's, what's important in the homepage is leading your customers or your prospects where you want them to go or what you want them to do. And being very clear with who you're talking to. On my, on my site, I'm talking to solopreneurs, small teams, corporations, and trailblazers retreats. I'm talking to different people. I can't speak to them in the same way because solopreneurs have very different problems than uh, teams and corporations, right? So very clearly communicating uh, with impact. On the left, you don't know what she's about. On the right, you know that she's about creating impact and she's about a brand that is driven by purpose and motivated by millions. She's a speaker who helps, um, helps others um, speak. So very clear, very clear what she offers and the next steps. And then of course, it's all about consistency. I'm gonna go fast here in this. It's all about consistency. This is examples of having brands and sub brands within our company and creating consistency both online and offline. You can visit uh, Leap Zone Strategies for more, uh, more on that. So a quick recap is when you're crystal clear about how you want to leave people feeling, which is your energetic mission, what makes you the best, which is your promise, what makes you the only, which is your X factor, and what makes you delightful and relevant, which is your promise delivery system, People buy regardless of price. And of course, there's 10 vital brand positioning ingredients, and I've only shared three with you today, which means that there's, you know, we've only scratched the surface. But the key is to remember that being the first, the best, or the only gives you and your brand a huge advantage, right? huge advantage in the eyes of your clients and your prospects, and will allow you to thrive and grow despite of what's happening in the world because people will always buy. People buy solutions for their biggest problems every day, pandemic or not. The question is, will they buy you, your solution, or will they buy someone else's? And I remember being in front of, in my early 20s, I remember being in front of HSBC. They weren't a client yet. And I remember sitting in front of the marketing director and man, truly, I was in probably like just barely 20. And within a few minutes, I had them from investigating me, right, like sniffing me, <laughs> to praying that I was going to take them on as a client. And when I named my price and they happily said yes, I felt valued. I felt like my hard work in establishing and owning my positioning of being the only agency that provides strategy, implementation, and a unique performance coaching process to help brands and teams become the first, the best, and the only, they truly uh, at that time became my, my first $100,000 client. And in my early 20s, that was quite the win. And that doesn't happen by accident. That happens by design. And it all starts with you uh, getting the right positioning for your unique brand in place, right? Getting that in place. And of course, getting the right support to help you get it done 
but most importantly, get it done well. So at the beginning, I promised a couple of ways uh, that you can go deeper on the positioning subject. Um, so one is um, a brand boost assessment, super simple. It's five questions and I've, I'm, I'm less but better type of person, right? I like to do things simple, but with huge impact and potency. So it's five simple questions to inspect your brand and your business. So what you'll go through in downloading this for free, of course, you'll go through a series of five symptoms that many business owners experience. And then you'll simply rate yourself and your business on the degree to which that symptom is present or absent in your business. And it's a, it's a truly valuable exercise to help you pinpoint potential blind spots and also next steps to fixing those blind spots in the um, positioning and branding realm. So you can go to leapzonestrategies.com uh, slash brand boost uh, to download it for free. And the second thing, second opportunity is to simply get on a call with me or one of my coaches to uh, identify the number one point of leverage for you to become the first, the best, or the only. There might be ways to pivot. Uh, the key here is um, finding the, the linchpin, right? The one point of leverage uh, to help you pivot and um, strengthen the positioning. And, and truly, I can say with 100% confidence that my team and I, we are built to work in these crazy difficult times. We're built to work with entrepreneurs and, th and thought leaders who are obsessed, right? Who are obsessed with making life better for themselves, right? Making life better for their team and their clients. And who want to do that in a simple, impactful and differentiating way. So uh, if that's you, then um, I would love, I would love to connect with you. And, and especially if you've connected with um, my content, with what I've shared with you today, um, I would invite you to fill out my needs assessment so that we can get on an insight call together. And that's an opportunity for, for us to get to know each other and an opportunity for us to see if and how we can best help you uh, move forward. And just go to Leapzone. The address for that is leapzonestrategies.com slash rise. And uh, as I said before, branding and positioning truly can make or break your business. It can make your growth super slow or super propelled forward, like jet fuel. So truly, I mean, the, the, the key here is if you wanna grow, adapting to this new normal that COVID is creating is gonna be key. And positioning yourself as the first, the best, or the only in the eyes of your ideal clients, right? In the eyes of your um, ideal prospects is, it's actually not an option. It's the only way for you to hear, I would be a fool to work with anyone else but you, regardless of price. So Ruth Ann, so now what I'd love to do is, um, I would love to open up some questions. You know, is there questions along the way that you've had? I would also love to hear some gems or insights or realizations that, that you've had um, through this hour of, uh, of, of us being together today, but are there any questions, Ruthann? So I'll wait for people to type in some things, but right now, you know, you have unveiled a few things, you know, cleared the clutter. And I really liked what you said about, you know, creating delight and delight actually moves you to desire that, you know, they, it is, that's, you know, we all know it, but the clarity on that was, was very, very impactful. The, the other one that popped out for me anyway, while I'm waiting here is, is money loves clarity yes so can you just talk a little bit about what kind of clarity you know i know that you've talked discussed a little bit but just go back into that and let's just talk about the value what are you presenting how how should a business present themselves to to really make sure they're positioned to to provide that clarity for money yeah and you know what I, when i said money loves clarity truly it is so true it's about simplicity, right? The role of brand positioning strategists or my role is to look under the hood of a business, of a company and look at their genius and what they offer and really look at how 
can we express that and communicate that with the least amount of words possible and the most amount of potency possible. So it's not about more is better. It truly is about less is more, but it's not about just less. It's about having the right pieces in place. And when you land, when I land on a website, I need to be able to actually know what is it that you do? How do I recognize that this is for me, right? Ah, I see that this is for me. I recognize that you're speaking to me. You're not throwing everything in the kitchen sink at, at me. The key, what people don't understand is you cannot communicate everything you do and all the things that you help your clients with or your consumers with right from the get-go. It's important that you pick a path of entry, get your foot in the door with something that is key, desired, and important for people to buy, and then surprise and delight the crap out of them and then offer other things in your in your in your roster of products or services but the key mistake that i see is every time i get somewhere and by the way a website is the best spokesperson you'll ever have assuming it's designed and it flows intelligently and mistakes are made crazy mistakes are made all the time on specifically lack the lack of positioning and the lack of understanding of what makes you different in words, that doesn't help actually create promotional material or pieces, brand touch points that actually communicate this clearly. So if you're not clear at the root, how can you expect that all the other layers are gonna, they're only gonna get less clear and less clear and less clear along the way. And a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on a simple design website in Wix, you take a template, you put the information in there, well, that, that can go just a, just a small inch forward because if you're not, if you don't have the clarity of positioning, you're, you're screwed, truly. But I, I know you, you, uh, you said that swear word early on and you, and you apologize, but you know that that swear word has become the buzzword for 2020. So I think it's actually been incorporated by governments. But <laughs> I'm going to go on. Mauro, uh, he's touched on, uh, again, going back to this, are you paying enough? Four. And it's a really good and very interesting acid test. So tell us more a little bit, a little bit more about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people go into slashing prices in order to gain the business. And sometimes we have to go that route or there's a, an intelligent rationale to go that route. But most of the time people are consumers are have so much choice. And so they're so much savvier than they were 10 years ago um, that we have, to, they understand that most of the time you truly do get what you pay for. And of course, if you're not positioned as the first, the best, or the only, somehow in there, there's no way that you'll be able to actually have an, a, a great profit or have products and services that are priced intelligently for to get a profit, but to also get people to go, huh, it's it's more money and I see that I'm getting more value. The key is, uh, you know, people, once they experience you, if you do provide value and they value that value, of course, they're gonna wanna continue working with you. The key is to promote and communicate the value that you provide before people by you so that they can choose you but truly and sometimes sorry I, my brain is i have competing ideas here that my mouth is not fast enough for my brain most of the time it's setting up your the, your pricing structure to be desirable mac is a great example they're expensive yet they sell and they 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 built a cult like culture they never discount never they never discount. They uh, they always increase their prices. What they what they do is they offer amazing service, amazing value. So it's not about reducing the price. It's about adding value to actually make the price a non-issue. That's perfectly clear. And it and it and 
um, as you say, that resonates across all high level brands. And it, you know, the specialness that you feel because you have, you are a participant in that brand, either from a purchasing, uh, if it's a product or a service based uh, activity that you as the, as the customer feel special, feel recognized, um, feel like you are truly a part of, of something when you engage with it. Yeah. And you know what, just to go back to the example of Novex, Novex has over 80 drivers around town. Why not enroll all the drivers into becoming amazing spokesperson and advocates for the company? So creating a, a referral program. So we've created a Novex money and it's literally the, the drivers are not salespeople. They don't want to sell, but by wowing and delighting, what we want to do is create Novex money, give that money to the drivers and have drivers deploy that money to ideal clients who could become Novex clients, of course, because they're not going to throw those in the streets. They're going to actually be thoughtful with how they are delivering and there's rules around that. But truly engaging your team also to be very clear with your positioning and what you will and will not do and what you will offer in order to deliver on that and having everybody on your staff be the best advocates. So he went from two salespeople to literally 80 with a simple program without even feeling like it's sales. It's about wowing and delighting and it's about helpfulness. I have another presentation called Helpfulness is the New Hustle. And I help organization become more helpful, therefore more talked about, therefore more desired, therefore more purchased, right? It's like the, the chain reaction. Excellent. And it goes back to the basics of marketing that you talked about right at the beginning. Know, like, and trust. That's correct. Yep. And with that, I think we're almost out of time here. So I want to let everyone know that this has been recorded and it will be on the Tech Canada website uh, likely uh, later today or first thing tomorrow. So for any of you who are looking to spend some time with Isabel and her team, she's put the slide up. Please do take advantage of that 30 minutes. It'll probably be 30 minutes that'll change your business. So thank you again, Isabel, for joining us and for everyone. My pleasure. Have a great week, and I hope everyone's going to have a super long weekend. Take care. Take care.